so in this session we are going to discuss dynamic programming so we have seen several algorithms in which we try to solve a problem let's say we have seen a divide and conquer in which we try to solve a problem by dividing it into a sub problem so what happens is that we first solve a sub problem and while solving the sub problems we get the solution of the problem so what happens many a times is that it may happen that the same sub problem is getting solved again and again so it may happen that the sub problems are overlapping to understand this let's have this example so let's say this is a maze okay so this is a maze and we have to move from source to destination here one means that i can move through that cell and zero means that this is a blocked end i cannot move to that cell so generally in this case you can move either forward or downward so what you have to do is you have to find a path from source to destination so in this particular case if i see this particular cell if i see this particular cell okay let's say i start from here i come to this particular cell and i see that there is no way possible i solve this particular sub problem so now i have a sub problem that i have to move from this particular source to this destination and i have to solve this sub problem such that i have to move from here to here and i see that i cannot move from here to here reason being this path is blocked and even if i go here then eventually this path gets blocked so we know that there is no path possible from this particular cell now what happens let's say i have solved this sub problem once i came here now again let's say i take this path again when i take this path then i will come back to this particular cell so now i am again at this particular cell and i am again solving the complete path to check just to know the idea that this particular cell won't give me the solution so what has happened i have traveled through cell this particular cell twice i have solved the same sub problem twice so how dynamic programming can help us what we do in dynamic programming is that we will save the results so if we have solved this particular sub problem once i will just save the result that there is no path possible from this particular cell so that first when we come here we will solve the problem to know that okay i am not able to go from this particular cell next time when i come back here i don't have to solve this sub problem again since i have a table and i have kept the value there that there is let's say i keep if there is a path possible i keep uh, that as 1 and if there is no path possible i keep that as 0 so if there is 0 here then i know that okay there is no path possible from here so what will i do i will not go to solve this further i will go back from here only so this is how we are saving the time so whatever algorithms we have seen till now so consider binary search only which is an example of divide and conquer so is it necessary to use binary search to search for an element in an array so given an array let's say this is the array and i have to find 3 so is it necessary to use binary search to search for an element in the array no we can search for an element simply going linearly in this array so why are we using binary search we are using binary search to optimize the time complexity we want that you have as less time possible to solve a particular problem so dynamic programming is solving the same case it is not the case that you cannot solve a problem without dynamic programming you can solve it but we use dynamic programming to reduce the time complexity many times what happens is that we get exponential time complexities and by using dynamic programming we can reduce the time complexities to a great level so this example i just took to make you understand that what dynamic programming is let's take another example and let's see that how dynamic programming will solve the time complexity and how do we write code for dynamic programming now let's try to understand more about dynamic programming by calculating fibonacci series for a number n so given a number n you have to print the fibonacci series
okay so we know that the recurrence relation for fibonacci goes like this if this is fib of n for n equal to 0 we have value as 0 for n equal to 1 we have value as 1 for n greater than 1 our value will be fib of n will be fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2 okay now given this problem this is a great confusion among students that how do I know that this particular problem can be solved using dynamic programming. So there are two very important properties of dynamic programming or let's say the problem statement should satisfy these two properties so that dynamic programming can be used to optimize the time complexity. So it is optimal substructure and And another one is overlapping subproblems. Any problem that can be solved using dynamic programming should follow these two things. It should have a optical substructure and overlapping subproblems. We will try to understand what these terminologies mean using this example. So let me write the recursive code for printing Fibonacci series. So I can write the code as it and if n is equal to equal to 0 return 0 n is equal to equal to 1 return 1 else return fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2 Okay, so this will be the recursive code. So let's try to see that let's say I have to calculate Fibonacci for n is equal to 5. So let's see what are the function calls that will be made or let's try to see what are the sub problems that need to be solved in order to calculate Fib 5. So let's say I have to calculate Fib 5. So as per the program, we calculate Fib 5. Fib 4 and Fib 3 will be called. So, first Fib of n minus 1 gets executed. So, let's say this gets executed even further. So, for Fib 4, we call Fib 3 and Fib 2. For calculating Fib 3, we have to calculate Fib 2 and Fib 1. We know that Fib 1 will return 1. Fib 2 for Fib 2, we will have to again calculate Fib 1 and Fib 0. Here again, we will have to calculate Fib 1. We will call the function Fib with parameter as 1 and 0. Okay, so this will return 1, this will return 0. So, first we will say that these are the function calls that these, this will be made, or you can see that these are the the problems that will be solved in order to solve this particular problem of printing fib of 5. So again this will take care of fib 4. Now for fib calculating fib 3 again we need to make a series of function calls or we need to solve particular sub problems for calculating fib 3. Let's see what are the sub problems. Again for calculating fib 2 for calculating fib 3, we need to calculate fib 2 and fib 1. For calculating fib 2, we have to calculate fib 1 and fib 0. So now, this is how the function calls will look. Or you can say that these are the sub problems that has to be solved in order to solve fib of 5. Now let's try to see that what are the overlapping sub problems. So we are trying to as of now, before we go on to solve this problem with dynamic programming, we are trying to understand that whether we can implement dynamic programming or not. So as I have seen that a problem should satisfy two things for being a dynamic pro uh, for being solvable by dynamic programming. One is optimal substructure, another is overlapping subproblems. So what is overlapping subproblems? So what's happening here is that this fifth two 
is getting called one, two, three. Yeah, it is getting called three number of times. So I can see that there is a sub problem that is getting overlapped. So if I solve this problem once, then this particular sub problem result can be used at two different points also. So there is a overlapping of sub problems. So obviously for a result to be useful, let's say let's say I use store as result, and if the result of that sub problem is not getting used, there is no point of so storing the result. That won't help us with the time complexity. We will look at that example as well. As of now, try to understand that there are sub problems that are getting repeated and that are getting overlapped. So again, this trip three. We are calculating trip 3 here also and here also. So we have overlapping sub problems here. Now what is optimal substructure? So optimal substructure is that when we calculate the result of a sub problem or the solution of sub problem should contribute to the sublation of problem. So in this particular case, if we calculate trip 3, then this trip 3 will contribute to the calculation of FIB 5. So this problem is satisfying both the conditions. They have overlapping sub problems and they have optimal substructure as well. Now how can we implement dynamic programming to improve the time complexity? So in this case what will be the time complexity? So if we try to try to find the time complexity I can write that time complexity for calculating FIB of n is equal to t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2 and we have seen in the time complexity session that this will lead to time complexity of O of 2 to the power n. So we are getting time complexity that is exponential. So we can see here that we are solving the same problems again and again. So now we will try to reduce this exponential time complexity. So let's say, let's see how we can reduce this. So again, coming back to the same thing, I'm repeating this thing that we are solving the same problem again and again. Now what we will do is that once I have calculated FIB3, so let's say I come across FIB3 here. What will I do? I will store the result of FIB3. For that matter, let's say I come across FIB2 here. In order to calculate FIB3, obviously I need to calculate FIB2. Let's say I come across FIB2 here for the first time. What will I do? I will maintain a table. What will I do? In this table, I will keep on updating the data or I will keep on storing the result of the sub problem such that once I calculate FIB2 and next time when I have to calculate FIB2 or next time when I want to know the result of FIB2, I don't have to do this calculation again. I can just refer to this particular table and I can come up with the result. So let's say I have FIB2. I have FIB3. So I have calculated FIB2 and FIB3 here. Now here again we have to calculate FIB3. So here if I have calculated FIB3 here and I have stored the result then I won't have to do this complete thing. So this will improve the time complexity to a great extent. So let's see how do we implement dynamic programming exactly in this case. So basically there are two ways to approach to implement dynamic programming. First is bottom up and second is top down. So again using this example we will see that what are the two approaches. 